Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you very much for inviting me here, for giving me this opportunity to talk about the research vessel and their transnational use. Uh, this is something that has been required for, by, from us by the EU for already decades, and I'll be coming back to that. In the opening slide, I have two large research infrastructures. The other one on your left-hand side is, is Aranda, and it's an existing thing, uh, working towards the end of her, her uh, life. And the, and the one on the right side is just a concept image of a type of multipurpose vessel, which I believe right now is under the procurement uh, tender uh, for, for the Estonia. And uh, it's, it's just an idea. It's, it's not the uh, image, so to say, but uh, just to give you an idea. And we work the same, same area, so this is, this is what I'm going to be talking about. But first of all, I have, to, I have to put out the disclaimer. What I'm going to be talking about now is not an official suggestion by Suke or any other Finnish authority. It's my personal opinion based on my plus 20, 30, 40 years of, of, of experience by, by as, as a research vessel user, as a scientist, a chief scientist, a research vessel operator and a developer. And the key word here is the TNA, the transnational access. Like I said, this is something that has been required from us for a long time already. And all the, the research vessel operations in, within EU and also the rest of the world are aiming towards this. And in the core of my suggestion is the, the, the basic idea of the most cost-efficient use of these large research infrastructures in order to, to achieve the transnational goals uh, in, in, in marine environmental monitoring and science. Like, like Miles very well appoint, uh, 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 pointed out that the seas know no boundaries, either if it's uh, pelagic science or ge marine geology, anything. There's no, there's no borders there. Now, I will probably get a bollocking out of this, but uh, as, at least I think it needs to be said out loud. Here we go. Okay, the, the experiences of research infrastructure sharing we already have between Finland and Sweden. The Swedes lost their research vessel, the old Argos. Somebody found out that, that, that the, the, actually the insulation material was asbestos and the ship was scrapped before the cat had time to fart. And uh, th then they were without the ship and they tried first their coast, coast card cutters and they didn't like it. Then they operated on Aranda for, from 2014 to, to 2019. And that operation, of course, everybody knew from the onset that it's, it's, it's uh, temporary as the Swedes were already procuring their new vessel, which they eventually got. And it's a nice, nice fine vessel, the Svea. But the thing is that this cooperation was very successful. And it was not only about the increased sa sailing days and a replacement vessel for the Swedes and for uh, sailing days for us, but it also resulted in, in removal of a lot of overlapping work which we had done previously. Many, many cruises where I was a chief scientist, I was actually, uh, we were working on Aranda on some, some research station and the Argos was waiting to do, do the same thing after us. So a lot of this we could avoid. The Swedes are now taking care of the monitoring of the Baltic proper and the, and the Western coast. And we do the, the, the Bothnian Bay system in the winter as their, their new ship is not the ice, ice going vessel. So the, the advantages of removing the overlapping work and, and organizing the monitoring in cost-efficient way, that actually remained after the, the, the Swedes no longer needed our vessel. Well, what about us then, Finland and Estonia? We are actually monitoring the same water, the same thing as, as uh, with, between us and Swedes, but even to a, to a further extent. Nobody else is monitoring the Gulf of Finland. So these are the, this, uh, thank you Urmas for providing the data, these are the Estonian offshore monitoring stations and then when you put our offshore monitoring stations and make the image a bit transparent, same stations, same water for the most. So if, if, uh, if we're thinking about that, so we might as well be pulling on the same rope. We're monitoring the same water, sta same stations, doing the same thing. So. What I'm, I'm suggesting here is that we should seriously think about harmonization, our monitoring programs. Not that you would charter our vessel or we would charter yours, but we just totally harmonize them and start working together. The idea is that, 
of course, this harmonization, it would be a lot of work. You, uh, Estonia has six cruises annually, we do four. Uh, the station networks, many stations are the same, but then again, uh, there are many stations that are different. And of course, you cannot break existing time series. Those are the most valuable assets of, of any monitoring program. But it can be done. It, these things can be combined. You just need a careful uh, evaluation and planning. And this is what we did with, with the Swedes, and it worked just fine. Monitoring, of course, is under quality assurance systems and the certifications, and we each have our own. But we have had intercalibrations, and we're not that far off from each other, as far as I understand. So, so basically, it's, it's a doable thing. It is lots of work, but there are also advantages. For instance, Aranda today, she's capable of working all year round in, the, in any parts of the Baltic. She works 24-7, which actually, at the end of the day, saves a lot of money in man hours and, and cost of ship time at sea, which is the highest thing here, the most important. Uh, and, and the advantages in this would be that uh, we would have more sailing days for Aranda and Estonia, you could access this infrastructure uh, when, we, when we actually harmonize the monitoring by just covering the cost of your own use. You, you wouldn't have to charter the vessel. You just cover the own, 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 your, your own cost. We, we, would, we would do the, combining, uh, the, the monitoring cruises together, use, you know, combine our, our, our science crews, do the work, do all the stations, and then just calculate which, which proportion is, is of the cost is on, on, on which country's uh, uh, responsibility. And also, what I suggest we should definitely do on these monitoring costs, which we have been doing for many, many years, since uh, all the time Suke has, has, has had the responsibility over Aranda, there actually haven't been any real submarine science cruises uh, supported by Suke, even though it's, it says so in the law. So we have always combined scientific research programs with the monitoring cruises, where, whenever they fit the cruise program, whenever there's free berths on the ship, welcome. And this, this we could do together. So we could also, in addition to monitoring, advance the uh, production of good marine science. And after all, we have to understand that if we just stick to monitoring, it will not develop anywhere. And at the end of the day, uh, in, in, in even foreseeable future, we might be monitoring something that we wouldn't have wanted to do in the first place. We need science to develop the monitoring, open the black box boxes, understand the ecosystem workings, whatever it is. So at the, at the end of the day, avoiding overlapping work uh, would mean more resources for the monitoring, development of the monitoring, and, and, and doing good marine science. Well, what about the coastal monitoring then? Uh, we, have, we have used the ship of opportunity for this, and we actually have a very well working container system. It's based on two 20 foot containers, uh, sampling, slab, sampling lab, and an analysis lab with the, uh, with the piggyback uh, A frame and wind system on top. And it has been successfully used on, on different kinds of ships. Actually, the lower, lower, lower image is a Finnish flat, flatbed uh, sup supply, supply vessel, which was used by the Swedes when Aranda was docked for the repairs. So actually, your new vessel, if the, if the procurement becomes a reality, it's a multi-purpose vessel, and due to, due to the restrictions of the Estonian waterways, it has to have a shallow draft. So actually, your vessel, the new vessel, then could be used also for Finnish coastal monitoring, by, and, and you could use our container system. It's, it's a good system, but they're not cheap. But, it, but once you get them, they work. So eventually, we could have a Gulf of Finland barter market for, for ship time, you know, trade ship time, because the ships will be different, and they have different capabilities. So, um, and the, 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 I already mentioned a couple of times the, the, uh, this drive from EU and, uh, and the international research vessel operators that the, the transnational access to large research infrastructures like the research vessels it's, it's really a strong drive. There have been projects like the Eurofleets, uh, Urmas, that Estonia has been with Eurofleets already from, from the beginning. We got on board as, as, as fast as it, it became my time to, to, to work it out. 
So Eurofleets was a EU-funded program to, act, to, 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 to facilitate access of scientists who would naturally not have access to research vessels. They, they would sub, uh, uh, supply their, their uh, or, or, or apl apply for funding for a cruise and then it would be evaluated and if it was successful then they were, grant, they were granted the, the, the research vessel for their purpose in an area where they wanted to work and then that, uh, the, the, the expenses of the research vessel usage was, was, was paid for the owner. Uh, Aranda was used in the last program, Tavi Liblik was the cruise leader and it was, uh, they worked together with the Finnish Meteorological Institute and it was a very successful cruise. And the development and the goal of the Eurofleet system has been always that it will, be, it will have to become a permanent financing issue, permanent funding, funding, funding body for research vessel, uh, vessel use. Uh, and this is now what we're trying to achieve and, and put together is the Eurofleet's RI, research infrastructure. This is the goal. Uh, the steps forward would include that uh, we, we, we should utilize the available resources uh, for working the same water. And, and that is actually, in my opinion, the most cost-effective way of doing this. It's kind of funny, you know, these days, that our nations are richer than ever before, and we can't afford bloody anything. It's always the cost. No, 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 it costs so much. The cost efficiency, we need to, to, to be able to show the decision, decision makers that we are doing this as cost efficiently as possible. So what, what should uh, Finland and Estonia do is do all these things that I've suggested and also join the Eurofleet's RI, become part of that, because that funding instrument would provide us a possibility to do a lot of good marine science. Eurofleet is not for monitoring, it's for marine science. But, but these two, two things are not separate, they are inter intermingled. So I really recommend the participation to Eurofleet's RI, RI and, uh, so it's, because that will really increase the possibility to, to really do free marine science with research vessels. And to conclude, uh, in the coming years, these two ladies need to be replaced. I don't know, Salma is probably closer to, 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 the, to the end of her lifespan. Aranda uh, has to be replaced sometime during the 2030s as she reaches the end of her lifespan. Uh, and the new vessel in Finland has already been mentioned. So uh, it's not official yet, but it's already been mentioned at the, at the Suku and Ministries. And that means that the planning may or is about to start, but that is a long process. It takes 10 years minimum before we, 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 we're, 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 we have a ship. Uh, and also, I, like, like we just heard in the previous presentation, and we discussed the fact that uh, what fuel the ships will use in future is a big question mark. That we live in times where the challenges are totally new and, and, and they are, like I said, they are shrouded in mystery. The good thing with Aranda is that the, the lifespan of Aranda, uh, Aranda is ready to use biodiesel, all biofuels, and, and, and she's, she's good for that already, and we have used those fuels uh, operationally. And, and that will solve the problems for Aranda, but not for the new ship. What is the, the propulsion power for the new ship? We have no idea yet. Nobody has. Uh, State of California wants a new research ship for their Scripps uh, Ocean Institute. They are actually opting for a totally hydrogen-driven ship. It will cost over $100 million, but the state of California is good for $45 million because they want it. The state of California is going for the hydrogen economy because they got lots of uh, solar power, wind power to produce it. What we will do, well, it's up to the future generations. So uh, with these words, I just, I'm, I'm just saying thank you very much, and uh, I would like to. I would. I would. I would be happy to take any questions, any suggestions, or any bollocking. I'm good for that. Thank you. Thanks a lot. You will take any questions. Okay. <laughs> yes. On the end there, please. But wait for the microphone. Thank you for that. And I talk from bitter experience from a previous life in Australia. 
But often getting the infrastructure as a one-off thing is the easy part. Keeping it running is the difficult part. And the more expensive and large and capable these things are, the quicker the smaller institutions sort of get priced out of the market. And then even with the big institutions, um, like uh, your own, uh, it only takes one political decision to reduce the sea time um, and it seems often to be an easy source of money for government to, to cut those sort of expenditures. And then you get into a downward spiral where the vessel isn't at sea very often and therefore is no longer required. I, I've seen that, that sort of cycle happen a couple of times in my career. Um, I absolutely compliment your, your um, comments on trying to obtain permanent funding, but I, I just wonder is that a realistic thing to do, which is obviously the requirement that we need to have to make these things work? Well, actually, since the, uh, since the uh, discontinuation of, of Finnish Institute of Marine Research in 2008, which was one of the most brilliant decisions by Finnish government and, and parliament, this is sarcasm, uh, they, they, uh, uh, they, 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 we have been in that spiral. And my career as the manager for, for Aranda, and the same thing with Rita, my boss, and everybody else, has been a constant mud wrestle uphill to, to maintain the ship and at least maintain the, 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 the minimum of sailing days. We're talking about 100 to 150 sailing days these days, and it's way too little. But why I'm, why I'm here today and talking about this, there seems to be, there's two things. First of all, there's the, the, the Eurofleet's program that is, is advancing uh, pretty well in my opinion and nationally there is something happening right now which is changing things and the attitude towards Aranda and, and research vessel in, vessels in general is changing. There has been a lot of people with, with very slick moves and, and good ability to, to, to lobby things and these people mostly talk about the automated system and remote sensing and all that and they are claiming that yeah these, these replace the research vessels and that's, that is the biggest line of, of, of extreme nutrient loading if you like the uh, phasing. Anyway, uh, even a lot of decision makers these days they are beginning to understand that you can't work without the research vessels. Who's going to service all your automated systems? Where do you get the ground proofing data? Where do you get the in-depth data of the, of the ocean? So this is, this is uh, I totally share your view and I, I, I know what you're talking about, but there seems to be a bit of a carpe diem moment right now. And this is what I'm trying to utilize here. I hope this answered your question. Yes, Thomas, please. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Juha. It was a very nice presentation, and I think it's a very, very long process. I remember then, uh, it was in 2007 when European Marine Board published this position paper about the research fleets in Europe. Now it's 16 years, and we are still there. We don't have it, <laughs> but we have had three uh, Eurofleet projects and uh, we, we have been talking with uh, many of uh, scientists and also administration that this has to be done in that way that you just presented. But uh, for Estonia, it will be a very big change because in Estonia, we don't have a governmentally supported research vessel because uh, I'm managing research vessel, which is not supported at all by the government. We are just uh, uh, participating in some procurement processes. And uh, for the, the thing is that to keep this vessel, we do uh, quite a lot of work for uh, enterprises. This year we have more money coming from enterprises than from the government. And then also we do the monitoring for Latvian waters. It means that there are quite a lot of work around, but we have to cooperate with Finland, Estonia, Latvia, because Aranda, if our government uh, will afford that, that this will do the winter monitoring, for example, this would be the best decision ever, because we, what we miss 
sometime when we have ice, for example, then we miss the data from uh, coastal areas. And it, it has to be done somehow and decided somehow. And then when there will be another vessel or whatever vessels, we have to have this market or something. But again, for Estonia, it will be a very big change because uh, it has uh, a, a line in the budget has to appear because it's, it's not there at all. But I'm optimistic, but let's see. Yeah, I know, I know it's uh, none of us who have been in this business for any length of time are not overtly uh, uh, exposed to super duper optimism. But uh, well, close to my, uh, close to the end of my working career, now I see things happening that, that, that really make a big change. So this is, in a way, like I said, a carpe diem moment, and we should go for it. And like I said, uh, it, that was a good point, Urmas. Uh, I'm not suggesting that, you, that if, if, if this becomes a reality, you do everything with Aranda. The winter monitoring, for instance, is, is, the, is the key thing. That's, that's one capacity that Aranda has. And then if you get the new vessel, there's a lot of work, both in, in science and also, also in, in, in business, like the wind farm stuff. Aranda is already being being asked for that all the time, and we and therefore we are in the process of of sort of reforming the basis on how we define the cost, so that we don't disturb the market but still get we we need to get uh, like business for for the ship as well. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot to all speakers and questions.